द स्टोरीज ऑफ महाभारत वेलकम डियर फ्रेंड्स टू नदर एपिसोड ऑफ द स्टोरीज ऑफ महाभारत इन द लास्ट एपिसोड वी हर्ड द स्टोरी ऑफ द वर्चुअस बुचर एंड द स्टोरी ऑफ द्रौपदीज एडवाइस टू सत्यभामा After Markande and his followers left the Pandava Hermitage Yudhishthir decided to move again This time they selected the beautiful forest of Daitavana as their home They built their huts next to a blue lake and began to spend the rest of their days in exile Meanwhile in the Hastinapur palace Duryodhan was growing impatient he knew that the Pandavas exile would soon be over and they would go into hiding for a year and to send the Pandavas into exile for 12 more years they had to be dug out from their hiding in this 13th year Duryodhan knew His spies were the best and with the help from his uncle Shakuni the Pandavas would be exposed for sure but what if his spies fail what if the Pandavas use some magic trick and stay invisible for a year they have gods as their friends and if the gods help them it would be impossible to find the Pandava brothers while Duryodhan was brooding in his thoughts Karna and Shakuni entered the chamber Karna looked at Duryodhan and said my dear friend you must be thinking about the pandavas right Duryodhan stood up from his seat and said 12 years are almost over and we have only one more year to go shouldn't we be concerned Karna laughed and said ha don't worry we will find them in the 13th year Meanwhile enjoy the kingdom as much as you can I suggest you go and visit the pandavas and see how they are suffering in the forest watch them just as the mountain dwellers watch the tiny people down in the plains or the rich and prosperous watch the poor and wretched <laughs> trust me there is nothing more satisfying than watching your enemy suffer Duryodhan said Karna you have spoken my mind oh how i wish to witness the misery of the pandavas but that won't be possible the old king would never allow me depressed duryodhan went back to his seat shakuni has been listening to this conversation with a crooked smile on his face he looked up at duryodhan and said My dear nephew as far as my knowledge goes the pandavas now live in the forest of daitavana and close to daitavana is your cattle ranch it is the time of the year when the representatives of hastinapur visit the cattle ranch to account for the cattle if you tell your father that you would like to supervise the count in person he wouldn't stop you Duryodhan's eyes glistened with joy. You are right. Father would be happy to send me to do my duty at the cattle ranch. Uncle Shakuni, let's go to him now and ask him for his permission. Moments later, Duryodhan, Shakuni and Karna stepped into the royal chamber. They touched Dhritarashtra's feet to pay their respects. Shakuni said O king it is the time of the year to count the cattle in your cattle ranch and account for the livestock you own the cowherds and the caretakers are waiting for our visit i suggest you send prince duryodhan to perform this sacred duty and 
spend a few days hunting in the forest the blind king knew that this request was not as innocent as it sounded he sat down on his throne and said i am pleased to hear that duryodhan would like to volunteer to account for our cattle a hunting trip along with it would be nice too but i understand the mighty pandavas live close by and for that reason i wouldn't like you to go i am not worried about yudhishthir he is kind and virtuous but bhim may not stay calm when he sees you i also hear arjun is back from the heavens with a huge arsenal of divine weapons i am afraid when you see them you do some mischief to humiliate the pandavas and their wrath would then destroy you duryodhan no no i cannot let you do this to yourself don't worry about the ranch i'll send someone else to take care of the cattle shakuni stepped close to the king and said <laughs> i understand your concern but i can promise you we will go nowhere near the pandavas we will only go to account for the cattle and have some fun nothing else the reluctant king had no choice but to agree with a huge entourage duryodhan departed for the cattle ranch near daitavan the sarshan shakuni and karna accompanied him along with their wives and consorts thousands of elephants horses chariots carried the kauravas their provisions and their weapons a huge battalion of soldiers accompanied the princess to protect them brahmins entertainers storytellers dancers joined the team to keep the travelers engaged during the time of rest soon they arrived at the cattle ranch and the ranch keepers were delighted to have their prince amongst them they got busy trying to entertain the prince and his guests while duryodhan got busy counting the cows and the calves duryodhan called his servants and soldiers and said go to the forest of daitavana and build houses for me and my friends i wish to relax for few days in peace the servants at once left for daitavana along with several artisans during that time the gandharva king chitrasen was visiting the daitavana forest along with his entourage when the kaurava artisans and the soldiers arrived in the forest the gandharva soldiers stopped them leave these grounds right now they said our king chitrasen is resting do not disturb his peace the artisans didn't dare to challenge the fierce gandharva soldiers they went back and reported the incident to duryodhan duryodhan was furious he called some of his bravest soldiers and said how dared the gandharvas stop me from building the houses go and teach them a good lesson but the gandharvas were too powerful and defeated duryodhan's soldiers in a matter of hours duryodhan called his entire army and along with karna and dushashan he attacked the gandharvas chitrasen was not happy to have his peaceful vacation being disrupted by the arrogant kaurava prince he ordered his army destroy these people let nobody escape the fierce gandharva army pounced upon the kauravas duryodhan never realized how well equipped the gandharvas were soon his army was in disarray his brothers gave up the fight and began to retreat but karna did not give in so easy he fought hard and used his superior skills to destroy hundreds of gandharvas duryodhan joined him chitrasen knew he had to change his strategy being a gandharva he was a master of illusions with magic 
he rendered his army invisible to the human eye. Armed with the magical power, the Gandharvas began to wreak havoc in the Kaurav army. They destroyed Karna's chariot and just as they were about to kill him, Karna jumped into Duryodhan's brother Vikarna's chariot and fled the battlefield. Duryodhan's army panicked and began to flee. But Duryodhan was adamant. He still kept on fighting. But soon his chariot was destroyed and he plunged into the ground. The Gandharvas captured Duryodhan, Dusarshan and their wives and took them to a secret place. The Kaurava folks who survived were at a loss. They didn't know what to do. A senior Brahmin priest said, The Pandavas live nearby. Let us go and ask for their help. In fact, they had no other choice. They went to Yudhishthir with their head held low and asked for his help. Bhim laughed and said, Ha 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 It's good that the Gandharvas did our job. Duryodhan's plans must have been to humiliate us. But the reverse happened. We are lucky that without us even moving a finger, Duryodhan was taught a lesson by our Gandharva friends. Yudhishthir was not happy to hear these harsh words from Bhim. He said, Come to your senses, Bhim. This is not the time to be cruel to our cousins. These Kaurava followers have come to us for our help and we cannot refuse them. Quarrels and conflicts are common within a family. But for that, we cannot sacrifice the honor of our family. By capturing the men and women of the Kuru dynasty, Chitrasen has committed a grievous crime. We must stand by our family at this time of distress. Beam. Think about it. Duryodhan is helpless and asking for our help. What can be more glorious? Go. Pick up your weapons and rescue our cousins. First, with nice words, ask Chitrasen to release them. If he doesn't listen, do not hesitate to use force. Bhim, Arjun, Nakul and Sahadev put on their armors picked up their weapons and mounted their chariots to meet the Gandharvas. Arjun went up to the Gandharva chieftain and said, We ask you to release our brother Duryodhan and his family. The Gandharva army chief laughed and said, How dare you order us? We only take orders from Indra, nobody else. With a calm voice, Arjun said, We don't wish to fight you. But if you do not listen to our request, we would be left with no other option. The Gandharvas were amused. You humans want to fight us? Don't you know what we have done to your Kaurava brothers? Bhim couldn't take it anymore. With his mace, he pounced upon the Gandharva army and a fierce battle broke out. Arjun attacked the Gandharvas with his Gandiva and his arrows killed thousands of Gandharva soldiers. Chitrasen himself picked up his mace and appeared in the battlefield to defend his people. But Arjuna's sharp arrows shredded his mace into bits and pieces. Chitrasen resorted to his magic powers. He became invisible and attacked the Pandavas. But Arjun was too smart to be tricked by this simple trick. He pulled out his sound-guided weapon and engaged it on his Gandiva for a final blow to destroy Chitrasen. Chitrasen gave up and appeared in front of Arjun with folded palms. I surrender, O great Pandava prince. Please consider me your friend. Arjuna retracted his weapon and said, All right, I will spare you. But why did you have to abduct Duryodhan and his family? Chitrasen said, Duryodhan and his brothers came here to humiliate you. When Indra knew of their plan, he asked me to capture Duryodhan and his family and take them to the heavens. 
So I was just obeying Indra's orders. Arjun said, Come with me. Yudhishthir would like to talk to you. The Pandava brothers took Chitrasen to the hermitage in the Daitavana forest. Chitrasen met Yudhishthir and paid him his respects. Yudhishthir said, Chitrasen, you are brave and strong. Duryodhan and his brothers have disturbed your peace and have learned their lesson. But I am happy that you haven't killed them all. I would now like to ask you to release them and save our family honor. Chitrasen said, O Emperor Yudhishthir, you are my friend now and it will be my pleasure to honor your request. He ordered his soldiers to release Duryodhan and his family. The Gandharvas brought the cages where Duryodhan and his family members were held and opened the doors. Duryodhan stepped out of the cage and walked towards Yudhishthir with his head held low in shame and disgrace. Yudhishthir said, Dear brother, never ever try such a misadventure. You are lucky that we were nearby and were able to help you in time. Else, this Gandharvas would have killed you. Now go back to Hastinapur in peace. Duryodhan bowed down to Yudhishthir to express his gratitude. But inside he was burning in shame and humiliation. Depressed and disgraced, the Kaurva prince began his journey back to the capital Hastinapur while the cheerful Pandavas bade them farewell. 